Now let's move on with subtopic 5.3, which is about solid. Okay, by the end of the lessons, you should know how to explain the fixed shape of a solid, apply the kinetic concepts to explain the following process of freezing, melting, sublimation, deposition of a solid, differentiate between amorphous and crystalline solids, and lastly, state the following types of crystalline solids with appropriate examples such as metallic, ionic, molecular covalent, and giant covalent. Okay, this diagram shows the process in the states of matter between solid, liquid, and gas, but since in this subtopic, Kita tengah study pasal solid kan? Jadinya, I'm just going to focus on the process of solid such as sublimation, melting, freezing and also deposition. Okay, next, Miss akan terangkan pasal physical properties ataupun process of solid yang melibatkan um, shape. Shape ni adalah physical properties of solid lah. And then the process of solid yang melibatkan freezing, melting, sublimation or deposition. When talking about physical properties of solid, I believe that most of you guys already know about this back in your high school. So basically, the basic physical properties of solid that you should know is solid ni dia ada fixed shape. Okay, maksudnya uh, dia ada definite shape and also a definite volume. Macam mana dia punya molecules punya arrangement? Okay, so these are how the solid molecules arrange. They are arranged in a fixed position. And also, they are very closely packed together. Alright, next, Miss nak terangkan pasal proses yang involved di dalam solid, which is one of it, ialah proses freezing. Di mana proses itu akan berubah daripada liquid menjadi solid. Okay, anyway, macam liquid dalam video liquid, Miss ada bagi tahu. Okay, kalau let's say you nak terangkan anything pasal... Uh, proses yang melibatkan pertukaran uh, change, pertukaran states of matter daripada liquid ke solid ke solid ke liquid, liquid ke gas ke bila you nak terangkan proses tersebut you kena gunakan point intermolecular forces ok, intermolecular forces between the molecules so, and then uh, after that, you perhati proses tu uh, proses tu melibatkan states of matter apa? Kalau freezing, dia melibatkan states of matter, liquid dan juga solid. Sebab freezing, dia merubah daripada liquid ke solid. Okay, and then next, bila you nak uh, describe the process in terms of intermolecular forces, you kena tahu uh, molecules of liquid ni dia arrange macam mana. Uh, obviously, they arrange in a uh, close, they close to each other, tapi tak sepak, tak seclose solid, tak serapat solid. Okay, so sekarang ni, liquid, dia punya molecules tak rapat sangat. Okay, solid, molecules dia rapat. So sekarang ni, bila you nak terangkan uh, in terms of intermolecular forces, you tahu liquid ni tak rapat, uh, dia punya molekul solid ni, dia punya molekul rapat. So, daripada tak rapat ke rapat. So, apa yang you boleh goreng uh, intermolecular forces ni punya point? So, kalau let's say daripada molekul tu tak rapat kepada rapat, you boleh guna point intermolecular forces yang particles tu cannot, cannot overcome. Ha, itu je. Kalau daripada tak rapat, you kena ingat ni, kalau daripada tak rapat ke rapat, okay, you guna point cannot overcome intermolecular forces. Sebab kenapa? Bila dia tak boleh overcome the intermolecular forces, makanya the particles tu akan slowly uh, merapatkan self jadi rapat. Okay, uh, so you kena tahu the nature of dia punya molecule saja. Itu je. Okay, lepas tu uh, next ialah apakah faktor yang melibatkan dia tak boleh overcome the intermolecular forces okay, kalau freezing obviously uh, mestilah temperature tu you turunkan kan uh, the temperature tu will be decrease so bila temperature decrease the kinetic energy of the molecules pun akan jadi decrease molecule mana ni? molecule liquid okay? uh, so dia punya kinetic energy of 
liquid molecules ni akan decrease. So, bila decrease, apa yang berlaku? The particles yang dekat dalam liquid molecule ni, dia akan move slowly. So, bila dia move slowly, makin lama dia orang pun akan makin rapat-rapat dengan each other. Sebab kenapa dia orang akan makin rapat dengan each other? Sebab dia orang tak boleh nak overcome the intermolecular forces between the molecules. So, bila dia tak boleh, ini point yang sebenarnya, tak boleh overcome the intermolecular forces between molecules, makanya um, itulah akan menyebabkan molecules ni menjadi rapat. So, dia akan jadi solid lah sebab solid dia punya molecules tu, dia punya nature of molecules dia adalah closely packed together. So, that's how you explain it. Okay, next process. Kalau you nak terangkan pasal proses melting, melting ni melibatkan proses solid berubah jadi liquid. Again, kalau let's say nak terangkan pasal proses, ni sebagi tahu, you kena goreng bab IMF sahaja and also you kena kenal pasti proses tu proses apa. In this case, proses tu merubah daripada solid ke liquid. Okay, so sekarang ni solid, uh, dia punya molecules tu mestilah closely packed together, betul. Uh, kena pack sangat-sangat lah. Uh, kalau liquid ni, dia punya molecules tu dia memanglah close to each other tapi tak serapat solid. So sekarang ni daripada sangat rapat kepada tak rapat. So kalau daripada sangat rapat ke tak rapat, that means ada lubang-lubang kosong kat situ kan. Kalau ada lubang-lubang kosong, apa yang you boleh goreng dekat intermolecular forces ni? Okay, point intermolecular forces kat sini dari, kalau daripada rapat ke tak rapat, you have to use uh, apa tu? Energy tu Uh, dia enough to overcome energy enough to overcome the intermolecular forces. Dia ada dua je. Uh, bila you describe pasal proses-proses ni, sama ada energy tu cukup nak overcome intermolecular forces ataupun energy tu uh, dia tak cukup nak overcome the intermolecular forces. Previously, process freezing Energi tu dia tak cukup nak overcome the intermolecular forces. That's why daripada uh, tak rapat, dia punya molecule jadi rapat. Yang in this case sebab kita nak daripada solid ke liquid, uh, so nak daripada rapat jadi tak rapat. So you perlukan uh, apa tu point yang menyebabkan energi tu enough untuk overcome the intermolecular forces. So apa, apakah, apakah yang menyebabkan Partikel ataupun uh, molekul tu ada enough energy untuk overcome the intermolecular forces between them. So let's look here. Okay. Bila you nak meltkan benda, obviously lah mestilah you akan naikkan temperature kan. So bila temperature tu increase, makanya kena take energy of molecules. Molecules apa? Solid molecules ni. Solid molecules ni pun akan increase. So apa yang berlaku? Solid particles ni dia akan dapat enough energy bila dia... Uh, dipanaskan. So, bila dia dipanaskan, maka dia pun menggeletik, menggeletik, menggedik-gedik, vibrate lah. Dia tengah vibrate energetically. So, apa berlaku? Particles ni, dia akan ada enough energy untuk overcome the intermolecular forces between them. So, bila ada enough energy to overcome the intermolecular forces between them, so, dia boleh break the intermolecular forces yang mencantumkan mereka, makanya dia akan jadi a little bit more loose. Uh, bila dia, dia dah jadi sedikit sedikit loose, uh, that's why dia free to move, uh, dia jadilah liquid. Okay. Okay, next. Macam mana kamu nak terangkan pasal proses sublimation? Again, uh, you kena tekan ke pasal intermolecular forces but before that, you need to know proses sublimation ni ialah proses di mana solid akan berubah menjadi gas. Again, bila you nak explain, bila nak explain, uh, you kena tahu kalau solid nak ke gas, kan? Uh, solid ni dia punya molecules very closely packed together. Okay, kalau gas pula very, very free. Uh, tak susun rapat-rapat pun. So, kat sini, uh, daripada sangat rapat kepada tak rapat langsung. So, apa yang you boleh goreng pasal uh, point intermolecular forces ni daripada sangat rapat ke tak rapat obviously lah, mestilah particles tu ada enough enough 
energy. Okay, to overcome into molecular process. Dia macam tu je. Kalau let's say you nak terangkan proses uh, yang daripada molecule tu dia rapat, jadi tak rapat, uh, you guna je point. Uh, and you, dia mesti you kena mention about uh, particles tu ada enough energy to overcome the intermolecular process. Okay, so before that, macam mana dia dapat enough energy to overcome the intermolecular process? Okay, mesti main factor temperature. Okay, because kenapa? Bila you naikkan temperature, kinetic energy of the particles also increases. Kinetic energy siapa? Kinetic energy of the solid. Solid particles ni dia punya kinetic energy dia akan increase. So, bila increase, maknanya uh, all of the particles in the molecules, dia ada enough energy untuk overcome the intermolecular forces. Bila ada enough energy to overcome the intermolecular forces, dia akan vibrate. Uh, maknanya lepas dia vibrate, dia pun akan loosekan dia punya particles. So, untuk escape jadi cast particles. Okay? Uh, so, that's why lah. That's how you explain it. Tapi contoh, Ya, contoh uh, proses sublimation ialah dry ice, uh, solid carbon dioxide. Okay, next, Miss nak terangkan pasal proses in solid yang melibatkan deposition di mana proses tu berlaku bila gas berubah menjadi solid. Obviously, it happen at a very very cold temperature. Kalau you pergi overseas kan, uh, if let's say you wake up in winter, tiba-tiba uh, you pergi kat padang, kat park ke, and then you see a lot of uh, daun yang dah frosted uh, macam ni. Ataupun bila terlampau sejuk kan, time winter you boleh nampak lah dekat uh, tingkap uh, bilik kamu tu dia macam uh, ni lah ada, dia jadi macam terlampau, sebab terlampau sejuk. So, angin yang sejuk tu, yang gas tu, dia berubah jadi solid. So, dia akan form a little bit of ice. Uh, macam frosty-frosty macam ni dekat tingkap. Okay. Tapi bila you nak terangkan pasal proses ni, again, if nak terangkan pasal proses, mesti melibatkan pasal point intermolecular forces. Okay. Since that proses ni uh, melibatkan uh, perubahan daripada gas kepada solid. Okay. You should know gas dia punya molecules ni very, very, very tak rapat lah. Okay. Daripada tak rapat, jadi molekul tu jadi rapat. So macam mana you nak terangkan tu daripada um, molekul tu jadi tak rapat jadi ke, ke jadi rapat. So point intermolecular forces yang you boleh guna kalau molekul tu daripada tak rapat jadi rapat ialah the particles, okay, particles tu dia tak ada enough energy. Okay, enough energy to overcome intermolecular process. Tapi apakah faktor yang menyebabkan partikel tu tak cukup energy to overcome intermolecular forces? Okay, faktor dia ialah faktor temperature. Okay, sebab bila temperature uh, decreases, makanya the kinetic energy of the particles also decreases. Kinetic energy of particle apa? Particles gas. Okay, so dia punya uh, particles gas ni uh, dia punya kinetic energy ni Uh, tak seberapa sangat lah Sebenarnya tak seberapa Makanya particles ni dia akan lose the energy And dia akan move a little bit slower So bila dia move slower Makin lama dia akan uh, Daripada tak rapat tu uh, Dia move slower so makin lama dia akan Makin merapatkan diri dengan each other So bila makin merapatkan diri dengan each other uh, And then energy yang dekat particles tu pula tak cukup nak overcome the intermolecular forces uh, ini adalah point yang sangat penting ya sebab dia tak cukup particles tu particles dekat gas tau particles dekat gas tu dia tak cukup nak overcome the intermolecular forces uh, makanya uh, dia punya particles tu akan bersama-sama lah uh, hold themselves together in a fix in a fix and orderly arrangement which is arrangement apa tu arrangement solid Alright, so there are two types of solid that you should know, which is the first one ialah crystalline solid, the second one ialah amorphous solid. Okay, kalau crystalline solid dia punya molecules tu, memanglah closely packed together, tapi uh, dia teratur. Kalau amorphous, dia closely packed together tapi tak teratur. Okay, uh, ni adalah contoh-contoh 
crystalline solid that you should know. Tapi Miss akan terangkan all of these crystalline solids later. Okay. Okay, so apa beza crystalline and amorphous solid? Okay, kalau crystalline solid, dia ada well-defined shape as what I have mentioned you earlier. Um, particles dekat crystalline solid ni, dia closely packed. Tapi dia arrange in a uh, orderly manner. Okay, itu dia punya point tu. Dia punya particles tu arrange in an orderly manner. Okay. While... Uh, particles dekat amorphous solid ni dia arrange eh, randomly lepas tu that's why dia tak ada uh, defined shape they have no well defined shape okay lepas tu crystalline solid ni dia terhasil bila uh, saturated liquid ni uh, disejukkan secara perlahan-lahan okay uh, manakala Kalau amorphous solid, uh, dia terhasil bila uh, liquid tu, saturated liquid tu, uh, disejukkan secara cepat. Okay. Lepas tu crystalline ni, dia ada sharp, very very sharp melting and also boiling point. Okay. Kalau amorphous solid pula, dia tak ada definite melting and boiling point. Okay. Kalau contoh-contoh crystalline solid yang you boleh nampak, uh, depan mata kamu dalam seharian ialah contohnya sugar, ice, salt. Uh, itu adalah contoh crystalline solid. Kalau amorphous solid, contoh-contohnya macam glass, any plastic material such as rubber, okay, and also charcoal. Okay, sekarang ni Miss nak terangkan pasal the types of crystalline solids. Okay, types of crystalline solid ni apa menyebabkan dia ada different types of crystalline solid because they don't have different types of bond, okay? Uh, contohnya, kalau ionic solid, dia terhasil melalui uh, ionic bond. Uh, kalau let's say metallic solid, dia terhasil daripada metallic bond. Okay, kalau let's say molecular covalent solid, dia terhasil daripada covalent bond. Uh, and kalau giant covalent crystal, dia terhasil daripada covalent bond jugalah. Okay, so that's why uh, crystalline solids ada empat jenis, which is ionic solid, metallic solid, molecular covalent solid, and lastly is giant covalent crystal. Okay, examples of ionic solid ialah salt, NaCl. NaCl ni sebab uh, dia terhasil daripada ionic bond of Na+, cation Na+, dengan Cl minus and ion. So, dapat NaCl kan? Uh, so, NaCl ni ialah ionic bond. Okay. Uh, so, that's why we call it as ionic solid. And then next ialah metallic solid. Metallic solid pula terasa daripada metallic bond. Contohnya, all kind of metal such as iron, sodium, magnesium. Okay. And next ialah molecular covalent solid. The types of molecular forces yang terlibat ialah covalent bond such as van der Waals forces. Okay, uh, for example, it is any uh, covalent uh, molecules or simple molecules such as solid um, H2O which is ice or solid CO2 which is dry ice. Okay, and lastly is a giant covalent crystal. Uh, the types of intermolecular forces atau bonding daripada giant covalent crystal ni ialah covalent bond uh, and also van der Waals forces juga lah. Basically van der Waals forces lah. Sorry. Okay, so the examples of giant covalent crystal ni ialah diamond and graphite. So that's all for solid.